Welcome to Nursing Uncensored. Yes, I'm Adrienne. I'm a float pool nurse. I am from Minneapolis, Minnesota. So um, I was excited to see that it was going to be 60 degrees today. It's like summer all over again. <laughs> um, I'm here with a very different kind of episode today. In fact, I can't believe I am where I am. 48 hours ago, I was totally unprepared. I'm still kind of totally unprepared. And I was panicking a little bit about today. But now I'm in Nashville. Um, and a little bit panicky, but I think I'll get through today. I'm going to try to control my potty mouth because not all of you signed up for the truly uncensored version of the show. Um, but I am so excited to be at the inaugural Nurses PodCon. This is a great event, and I'm excited uh, to be a part of this. Um, I've gotten to meet a lot of internet friends, people that I've known for years, like Tina and Jamie, and I've also got to meet people that I consider new friends so that I hope to talk to a little bit more as the day goes on. Um, and this is also my, as I said, my first live podcast. It's terrifying. And I considered wearing sunglasses, you know, so you guys couldn't see me. Because that's how it works, right? Like, if, <laughs> if you can't, if I've got glasses on, you can't see me. Um, but I'm going to be brave today. So I'm here, guarded by all my pandemic pounds that I put on with the taco trucks in Minneapolis. Um, <laughs> and today, we are going to specifically celebrate podcasts, nursing podcasts, to be very specific. And I want to take a second to acknowledge each of the shows represented here. Good Nurse, Bad Nurse, The Neurodivergent Nurse, Just Some Podcast for Advanced Practitioners, The Art of Emer Sorry, let me check that again. No edits today. The Art of Emergency Nursing, Up My Nursing Game, Nursing School Tutoring with Nurse Jair, Simple Nursing, who I believe is going to be zapping in remotely, and uh, our TikTok Reels and uh, TikTok and Reels bestie, Nurse Jess, Jessica. Um, so I love that we're all here together today. It's kind of surreal looking at all of your faces, not with a screen in between us. So that's been a really great experience. I also want to shout out our very generous sponsors who have made all of this happen today. Like this has been really wonderful of them to step up to the plate. We've got Trusted Health, a recruiter-free travel nurse matching site, which I've uh, explored a little bit. I'm not a traveler yet, but that day may come, so watch out, world at large. We've also got Stoggles, as Jessica was mentioning, the fashionable safety glasses. They sent us all a pair, and they have saved me from wearing the hideous hospital-issued, like, basketball-style safety goggles that we all have to wear. They really are ugly, so Stoggles keeps me from feeling like the nerdy kid at school. Um, we're also sponsored by Samuel Merritt University's FNP program. They offer up to 10,000 in scholarships. They are basically like a, a nurse, like a health sciences specific uh, university. So check them out. We've also got CBD Stat, which I've had an arm injury lately, and I've been smearing CBD Stat's products all over my arm, and they have actually saved me from being in quite a lot of pain. So they're pure THC free CBD products out of Vermont. Uh, they rock my sore muscles. So thank you to all of them for allowing us to come here together in Nashville. They literally have made this happen. So awesome of them. So when you really break this down to our lowest common denominator, we're all here to celebrate the fact that we spend time talking for long periods of time into like voice or video recorders, either alone or with others, and then we put it on the internet. So we all have just a little bit of narcissism in ourselves. Um, but also like we have this, this altruism that we want to share what we know and share our experiences and, and send it out into the the interwebs for other people to, 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 you know, to have and to save and to refer to when they need it the most, whether for um, learning or just laughs. Now, if I say this in like a really poignant way and not just that we're all narcissists that like to hear ourselves talk, we're contributing to the collective knowledge of nurses. And 
I want to spend a few minutes just poetically reminiscing about how podcasts have added to my learning experience as a nurse and how they're adding to the overall experience of modern nursing education. And hold up, guys, don't, don't click away. This isn't an academic piece purely, but rather just my own thoughts after years of devouring probably thousands of podcast episodes. I wouldn't be able to even quantify the things they've taught me, both useful and completely inane bullshit, both of which I think are impressive. Impressive educational stuff and impressive bullshit. So um, first, let's, uh, let's flash way back to my childhood. Um, my mom is and was a TV watcher, but my dad, rest his soul, he was the radio listener. So most specifically AM radio, and even more specifically AM talk radio. So I clearly remember him starting his days with National Public Radio and the serious voices reporting the critical headlines of the day, editorial stuff. And then he'd end his day with, I don't know if any of you are going to know this name, Art Bell. So Art Bell used to talk about, uh, it was like fuzzed out stories of the paranormal. And I remember hearing stories of like aliens, chupacabras, and all this random stuff that scared me just enough that I would like listen from the stairwell and then run quietly back to bed praying I didn't get like caught by the chupacabra on the way back, whatever that was, I didn't know at the time. So these sounds of people telling me things through the radio became normal, everyday parts of the atmosphere. And as I got older, they were synonymous with my dad. It was one of the ways, one of the many ways he got me interested in learning. And he knew what he was doing, okay? So the, this, was, this was a smart man. He just got me interested in learning through like osmosis, basically through the atmosphere. We talk about stuff we heard on the radio. He'd encourage me to look up stuff. Now this was back before the internet existed. So like I'd have to go to the library to look this shit up. So <laughs> it was not like Googling things like I do now. Now you hear about something interesting and you, all you have to do is go to your smartphone. Back then I actually had to do some footwork. But in no unsubtle terms, the groundwork was laid for me. It only take me another like two decades to actually put it to good use. So fast forward to my early 30s, and this is becoming more relevant to nursing. I'm desperate to get into nursing school, okay? I've already dragged myself through a gauntlet of prerequisites, science and math classes. And I don't know the exact period of time that I started um, scrolling through podcast catalogs, but it was a day that changed my life. And I know that sounds super corny, but it happened, okay? So it may have happened in tandem with me, like discovering NRSNG videos, which if you don't know that channel, it's now nursing.com and they are also a wealth of resources, but not only are they a YouTube channel, they have like seven podcasts. Okay. They have like a pharmacology podcast. They have like a lab, lab specific podcast. They have like 8 million podcasts. So I started listening to those and I realized that they were essentially these like short radio shows or voice recordings of people explaining shit to me way better than my professors were. And that's, you know, that's not to, you know, dump on my professors, just some people are better teachers than others. And it's sometimes easier to explain things when you have a recording device and all the time in the world in your apartment or your recording studio, it's different when you got 30 students staring at you from, you know, behind their desks. So these podcasts were also definitely more digestible than my textbooks. I mean, everybody, I mean, how many of us have actually like read our textbooks, like every paragraph that was assigned to us, like I'd be surprised if maybe maybe there are the overachievers out there, but I wasn't one of them. I was like, okay, how can I not read this chapter and just find like 10 different podcast episodes that will tell me everything that's in this chapter? But back then, like I was listening to RNFM radio, the Nurse Keith show, Weird Medicine, which Weird Medicine, if any of you are, you know, uh, devoted nursing uncensored listeners, you know that Weird Medicine is kind of a thing that 
catalyzed me to start this podcast. But anyway, it's like those were the podcasts, whatever else existed, like circa 2014 to 2016. Um, but anyway, from listening to these shows, I found that I was remembering facts and patho and stories way better than I was remembering case studies and flashcards. So I thought, there's something there. Why? And I think it's because the stories have life and emotion and a range of other cues that make them stick to my brain in ways that are way easier to recall than just the bland textbook case studies and, you know, Mr. Jones is a 74-year-old man who presents with blah, 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 blah. That stuff didn't seem to help me as much. So for this reason and others, I think that podcasts are way more effective than many academic lectures. Now you might say, Adrienne, podcasts are basically lectures. Someone with a voice is telling you some things that you're expected to remember and recall later. But there are a few things that may po make podcasts different than regular academic lectures. First and foremost, podcasts have good audio. <laughs> So when I first started thinking about this distinction, I got like a little twang of pain in my ears because I was thinking about all the wretchedly bad audio files that I had to listen to in college. I don't know what my professors were recording on, but I want those devices destroyed immediately. I think about uh, the fact that this wasn't that long ago, like everybody, you know, I went to college in like the 2010s, so everybody had... And a smartphone, you know, we've got iMacs. I don't know how they were recording these things, but um, the static, the like audio going up and down, like basically my professors were torturing me with the sounds they were recording their lectures on. Not only that, but podcasts have people who like sound interested, they are enthusiastic, they have a good speaking voice, some background music, like all of these things like that podcasters take the attention to detail for, they want their stuff to sound good. So that right away makes it better than just like the lecture that your like 74 year old professor recorded on the like Dell computer in the science lab at your university. So for those lecturers that do take the effort to like record good sounding lectures, I apologize, you're not included in this math, like keep doing what you're doing. But podcasts are also on demand and easily accessible. And I know that at one point doing online school was like frowned upon, people didn't like it, we were worried that students weren't gonna get what they need. But now at this point, post pandemic, mid pandemic, whatever you wanna say, we're all doing online everything. So I think that's taboo, that ship has sailed. Obviously we want nurses to get hands-on clinical experience, but for lectures, like let's just let's just get things online because let me tell you all those students that don't want to show up for their 7 a.m. lectures they'll listen to those lectures if you make them easy to listen to and on demand so that to me says put lectures in podcasts MIT does it why can't we just listen to things as podcasts you know so um also, the other thing is with my when I went to school and I know other people have this problem as well. I was driving 60 miles round trip in the Iowa winters to go to class to listen to somebody talk for an hour, a couple hours about stuff that I could have easily listened to in an audio recording. So I'm I mean, let's be real. Nobody wants to have to drive all that distance to access their education. So, again, podcasts are the wave of the future. I think that we we need to be making education more accessible to people. Um, and we've already today had CEUs available to people. Why can't we do that for students too, you know? Um, if they're gonna be entering the world of nursing, they've gotta be accountable for their own learning. So we've gotta make sure that people can access it and then trust that they're gonna do it. They're gonna have to pass the exams anyway, so why not give them access online? All right, so I got a little academic here. I told you that I thought that podcasts are often superior to lectures. I gave you reasons why. I supported my reasons, blah, blah, blah. That's not why you come to me. You don't come for, to me for the academic stuff. So all of this is me praising the quality of nursing podcasts, not merely as entertainment, though I spend a lot of time pretty fucking entertained by these fabulous nurses. But also, 
we add to the collective knowledge we share and pass down and around. Any nurse that's worth their salt knows that we talk, we teach, we share. It is our mission as nurses to be teachers and advocates, and that includes for each other. It's a natural progression that nurses become podcasters, content creators. I mean, what's the difference between you sharing a story at the nurse's station at three in the morning and putting it on a recording so that you can share it with everybody? I've learned so much from those nurses that have told me stuff that like, oh yeah, I had this guy once, he was in room 32, this happened. Like I had a nurse that told me that she had a patient come in and his fistula blew out. And of course, immediately I was like horrified, I was terrified, but then my next questions were, what did you do? How did you take care of it? What was the treatment? How, what was the outcome? And she laid out for me all of the things that she did. What, you know, who came to her aid? What were the follow-up treatments? And so in that moment, even though she was telling me a story that had like a shock factor and was gross and, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. I still now in my brain have like the treatment options. I know what to do if that happens. I know, you know, and so if, God forbid that should ever happen on my watch. I don't want to be there for that, which is also the reason I don't buy expensive scrubs. Um, but, you know, I have like some basis of education for how to handle something like that, which let me tell you, they don't teach you that stuff in school. There's not a there's not a textbook paragraph for what happens if somebody's fistula ruptures while you're doing their cares. Um, so. So, yeah, so. These are things that are natural for us to share and talk about. So I wanna spend the rest of my time talking about some awesome podcasts that are on my radar and how nurses and nursing students can utilize podcasts as education because this is what they're meant to. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I knew that the Wi-Fi, I'd be at the, at the mercy of my Wi-Fi and my memory, um, but I want to cruise my podcast app and just share with you an example of what things are like right now in the nursing podcast world, okay? Because when I started um, as a, in nursing school back in like 2014, there were a lot of podcasts there were a fair number of nursing podcasts. Excuse me, this is an opportune time to get the hiccups. Um, but you know, there were a fair number of nursing podcasts, but it's not like it is now. Now you can type in nurse to the Apple podcast app and you get like pages upon pages of things, all different categories, entertainment, education, um, you know, storytelling, all different types of nursing. And so I just want to kind of go a little bit through um, and just give you some ideas of some that are my favorites. And this is by no means meant to um, exclude anyone. These are just ones that I really love and I want to get them on your radar. Um, so I've already named the podcasts that are present here today, and I'm so grateful to share the mic with them. And they get airplay in my headphones on the regular, and I'm glad to say I know them in real life, so I'm not going to mention all of those. Um, and if you're listening to me now and you didn't wake up earlier to hear the first episodes of the day, you can go back and listen to those later with your digital pass, and I encourage that you do. Okay, so let's go, let's go into, I'm just typing nurse in. And immediately, there's a lot that I um, listen to on the regular. So everybody knows Nurse Blake, right? He pops up. He's like automatically at the top of the charts because he gets so much airplay. His videos um, have gotten him a lot of attention. I just saw him at the Angler Theater in Iowa City. His podcast is great. It's a lot of entertainment value, talking about the things we go through, so the social nature of nursing. So that's a great one. The Empowered Nurse. I've been listening to for a long time as well. That's Lacey Megan. Um, she talks a lot about um, how to empower, well, it's called the empowered nurse, but um, of course it talks about nurse empowerment. But this is one that I encourage for new nurses. This is a great one if you feel uncertain about what you want to do with your career or how you want to handle your, your just how you carry yourself as a nurse. Um, 
Also, there are a lot of what they call dead podcasts. Um, th those are podcasts, the name is really bad, but um, dead podcasts are podcasts that they're still up on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, but they're not making new episodes. And these are things that I encourage you to listen to as well, because even though they may not have put out an episode, you know, in a few years, they have a lot of great content up here. So we've got the nursing.com podcasts, they've got lab values, the nursing podcast, um, the NCLEX question podcast, um, Nurse Alice is another great one. She talks, so she's been on TV a lot as well. She's been on the doctor's podcasts. Um, she is, um, she makes the rounds, um, cup of nurses is another great podcast. Matt and Peter, they actually, we talked to them a little bit. We're hoping they'll join us at the next nurses podcon. Um, they, it's nice to hear, you know, we have a lot of male nurses here with us today, but as a female dominated, uh, profession, we like to hear from the guys because they bring a really interesting um, spin, you know, they have their role in this profession as well. We want to know, uh, we want to hear from everybody. We don't just want to hear from, from the girls. We've got legal nursing podcasts. So, um, you can hear about not just, uh, working as a legal nurse, but legal protections for yourself as a nurse. Um, there are labor and delivery nurse podcasts, the mommy labor nurse podcast, um, there are student nurses, the Keep Going Student Nurse podcast. Um, the Gritty Nurses are up in Canada. They're good friends of mine. I love the Gritty Nurses. That's like a lot of nurse activism, talking about protection for nurses, what you can do as a nurse to um, make the profession of nursing safer, more equitable, uh, a lot of actionable things that you can do. Um, there are podcasts for nurse practitioners, becoming a stress-free nurse practitioner. I mean, I could go on and on. I just want to mention a few more because there's a lot going on. Um, and I don't want this to just, to just become me like spouting off names. I'm trying to highlight a few that I find that are really valuable. Um, there is the Good News Nurse with Nurse Heather. That is specifically cannabis nursing, which is a very important um, aspect of nursing um, that is becoming more and more um, viable in parts of the country where uh, cannabis is being used for treatment of certain medical conditions. Um, even with pediatric patients, I've interviewed nurses on my podcast that work specifically with patients that um, uh, Western medicine has not worked for them, traditional treatments. And so they're looking to um, this new area of medicine, this newly studied, it's not a new area, but it's newly studied. So we've got podcasts about that. Fresh RN with Katie Cleaver. She, hers I really recommend because she will literally tell you like, hey, you're going to go work in the ICU. Here's what you should be doing as a new ICU nurse. Hey, you need help communicating with patients. Here are all the top tips for communicating with patients. Uh, you know, literally actionable things that you can look like how to be a preceptor. I listened to that before I took my first student as a preceptor. Um, I encourage you to just literally cruise on through, like look in these categories and just keep scrolling because there is so much information in here. There are so many podcasts or something for everybody and we could go on and on and on. And I'm not going to because I will put you all to sleep, but there is room for all of us. And that's the beauty of nurse podcasting is that I don't feel competition with a single one of these podcasters. We are all doing something so important and niche in so many ways that I don't feel that any of us are pushing anyone else out. There are so many topics, so many important things that need to be discussed and worked on that there is room for even more people. So if you have the desire to start a podcast. Don't stress. You know, there, there are companies that will be like, oh, you need to buy this kit with a mic and a mixer and a light and a this and a that. No, 
my first podcast I recorded on my phone with a shitty app and it sounded like garbage. And when people go back and listen to my first episodes, so I still get iTunes reviews that are like, wow, she doesn't know what she's doing. Her audio sounds like crap and she interrupts people. And she that's because I recorded it like three and a half years ago when I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't have any equipment. And then um, people listen a little further and they say, oh, yeah, I can tell when you got that new mic because your sound really changed. It doesn't matter. People still listen. I still get hits on those episodes that I recorded when they sounded like crap because the content is so good. People tell me those are their favorite episodes because of what we're talking about. So if you have something you want to talk about, something that you feel is missing out there, lectures that you feel that don't hit on things, start a podcast. Um, Sign up on, I mean, there's a million podcast platforms. Just do it. Make that leap. It doesn't matter if you you think you sound stupid, you don't. Um, Because there's some student out there, there's some nurse out there that wishes that somebody would explain this better that wishes that somebody would take the time to break it down in simplest terms. And um, sometimes people just want to listen and laugh. I've had people write to me and say, you know, I laughed so hard that I thought I was going to crash my car. So now I only listen when I'm at home because your show about cleaning up poop was so true and so right on that, um, you know, I, I, I just, I couldn't, my husband thought I was losing my mind because I was laughing so hard. So these are the things that make me keep going. This is what makes it worthwhile. So there's room for all of us. And I think that it's only going to get better in time. And I think that as we validate and legitimize podcasting for nurses, you're going to see more episodes with CEUs attached to them, more conventions like this. I know that this is going to grow because we already have podcasters, more podcasters that are interested in the next Nurses PodCon, which we're already planning. So this is fire, guys. This is like, this is the thing. And I think more schools need to catch on as well. So if you're a current nursing student, you need to be telling your instructors, your administrators, hey, I listen to these podcasts. They have these great episodes. You need to work these. And some schools do work them into their curriculums. Hey, if you need uh, extra help, there's this great podcast. If you want to go into this specialty, here's this great podcast. Um, I just want, I want to celebrate this because there's so much out there that uh, it's overwhelming at times. So I encourage you just get online, start searching, find the things that you want, save them. Like my, my save, people are like, what podcast do you listen to? And I'm like, okay, you're going to have to narrow it down because Mm -hmm. we're going to be here a little while. So I'm like, what do you want? Do you want nursing podcasts? Do you want news? Do you want entertainment? Do you want nursing entertainment, nursing news, nursing pathology? What do you want? Because I've got it all. Um, So I think I've made my case. We've got a broad, deep collection, plant information in your brain, make you laugh, keep you mentally stable. Um, There's... There's so much. And I'm and I'm such an advocate. So if anybody wants to message me, DM me, email me if you want to know more, if you want help knowing how to start a podcast, where do I go? What do I do? Um, I am an advocate for that. And the more, the deeper I get into this, the more podcasters I talk to, the more we help each other. Um, It's like a giant collective. It's like a brotherhood, a sisterhood, whatever you want to call it. Um, Even by just coming to this convention, I've already learned like, oh, man, this, you know, they're doing this. I should get in and I should get involved with this. I should get this person's email address. I should hop on with this sponsor. I should, you know, interview this person. Um, It's like one big, happy kind of family. So um, I think that that that's 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 my two cents um and i think that the more we do this just the the bigger this monster is going to grow and it's it's an unstoppable force um 
I know we went over a little bit on the last podcast, so I don't want to talk too much, but I, I want to know, are there any questions? Does anybody have any comments? Anybody want to throw down on this conversation? This, uh, this crazy uh, manic rambling. <laughs> yes, Jamie, what you got to say, girl? So what, uh, what made you take the leap? I was reading in the chat over here that someone's goal is to do a podcast one day. Um, what made you take that leap to start it? What made me take the yeah, leap? Like, so um, I was, like I was alluding earlier, I was listening to this podcast called Weird Medicine. And some of it is behind a paywall. Some of it is um, available just on, you know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever. But it's this doctor, Dr. Steve, and his, like, his cronies and friends. And um, they start, they have this podcast where it's like a call-in show. People call in, leave messages. They ask questions that are, like, they're too embarrassed to ask their doctors. It's a lot of, like, questions about, like, penises and farts and hemorrhoids and like you know weird stuff that people don't necessarily want to like ask about you know to their family doctor or whatever and then you know it's kind of yeah it's coarse language it's like you know lots of laughter and they promote um a product called like a flatus flute which is like a yeah yeah you can you can figure that out yourself anyway it was really coarse and it was uncensored and it made me laugh but I still learn things so I would go to class and they would like mention something and I'd be like oh this is the answer and they'd be like how do you know that and I'd be like I heard about it on weird medicine so I was like I'm learning from this weird inappropriate show I wish there was something like that for nurses where we can just lay it on the table like it is because sometimes that's how nurses talk like at the nurses station we're like man, did you see that guy, that 80-year-old man's broken penis pump? Like, how do you fit that in a brief? Like, these inappropriate things, but that you actually have to know how to do as a nurse. Um, and so it just made me think, like, I want to have a show like that. I want to have a show where we can just talk like we talk. And I come from, like, a working class, you know, blue-collar family, and the F word is, you know, it's just that's how we talk, and that's authentic, and you know, I didn't want to have to have a show where we can't talk about poop and we can't, you know, so I thought I'm just going to start a show. And it was terrible at first. And the first like three episodes I didn't even use. And I got a couple of my friends to come in on it with me. And they're both, you know, I, it was two guys and they were like, sure, we'll come on and talk about like testicles and, you know, nursing questions. And we did it and it took off. And then I started getting downloads and people started emailing me and being like, hey, this is awesome. And I was like, oh, my God, people are listening to this. And then I just kept doing it and people kept listening. And I was like, oh my God, this is like a self-fulfilling thing. And I don't know how the rest happened. I mean, I just kept doing it. So here I am. The more people email me, the more I want to do it. So I blame everybody else. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for your question. And I, um, I see somebody said, oh, I would fangirl and then probably ruin the whole show. People say that. I've had people say, like, oh, my God, I'm going to be so nervous. And then I talk to people for, like, 10 minutes before I start the recording, and then they forget we're recording, and we just have fun. And then at the end, they're like, oh, my God, that was so easy. And I'm like, see, I told you. And I'm like, normally, when I don't have a microphone in front of me, I'm shy, I'm introverted, nobody believes it, I'm not the party girl. Um, but for some reason, you hand me a microphone, and I become like, you know, I can get people to talk. So um, it just takes time. My first, um, my, my first episodes were stupid. They were really bad. And sometimes you just have to go for it. And um, you know, I, I've had people say, like, your show's stupid, I hope you die. And I'm just like, have a nice day. Like, thanks for listening. You're you're engaging with my content. Thanks for bumping up my numbers. Yep. And then you just have to move along. Because for every one person that is like, your show sucks, like, ten more people are like, oh, my God, I learned something from you. So uh, some creator, I don't remember who it was, said something like, I can't, I don't allow myself to respond to the haters until I've responded to every single one of the people that likes my stuff. 
So that's kind of the policy that I subscribe to. I don't respond to anybody that says anything negative until I've responded to all of the people that say nice things to me. So, yeah. So yeah, that's that's how I govern my life. And, and some weeks I'm like, I just, I don't have time to get a show out and I don't. And that's just how it is. So, yeah. Well, thank you guys. I have no idea how I'm doing on time because I also have ADHD. And so time is just, you know, I just set up alarms and go when people tell me to go. So um, usually at the end of every show, I wish people happy nursing. So happy nursing, guys. Goodbye.